morning's come, you watch the red sunrise. The LED still flickers in your eyes. Oh, you Hello, are... and welcome to the concepts video on transformation of functions. So sometimes, um, let's recall, first of all, what we had in the very first and first and second sections were what, what were called basic toolkit functions. Functions, okay? And some examples of these were uh, like x squared, square root of x. Um, what were some other ones? Let's see, x to the third. Um, we had like absolute value of x, all these kinds of things. These are called basic toolkit functions, also known as um, parent graphs or like a family of graphs, okay? And that's because they do have relatives. And the relatives are kind of obtained by doing different things to these functions. Um, so we can do, we can kind of transform these functions or alter them uh, by doing some a various a variety of things to them. So the first thing is called shifting. Kind of just moving it around, moving the whole graph uh, as a whole. Like all of the points, we're going to shift them by a certain amount, either up, down, left, right, any way you can imagine. Okay? So they're shifting. Um, there's also something called stretching, stretching, or compressing. Okay? That can happen, um, either of those can happen to a function. Stretching or compressing, kind of making it like wider or narrower, anything like that. Okay? Uh, we can reflect a graph, reflecting across the x-axis or the y-axis, okay? Or we can do all of these, or one or two or all of them at the same time, or a combination, okay? Or a combination. Alrighty, so it sounds exciting, so let's get started. Uh, we'll start with shifting. Okay, so shifting a graph basically just means kind of translating or moving it around, okay? So there are two types of shifting. Uh, just like there are going to be two types of pretty much everything that I go over. So vertical shifting, first of all. So let's say we're starting with f of x is equal to x squared. So this is our basic um, toolkit function. We're going to make this our example one. Okay? So we're going to do a lot of stuff with this function here. So our normal x squared graph looks like this. Let me, let me graph it here. So we have something like this. Here's our x and here's our y or f of x. Okay? So we have 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, let's say. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we'll go up to 6, and down 2. Okay, so normally our x squared graph looks like 0, 0, and then it goes up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, and then over 2, up 4 kind of thing. Okay, so it looks like an upward-facing U, right? So something like this. So this is our normal x squared graph, okay? So now let's say, okay, well, what if I give you the function x squared plus 2? It's like, well, why, why are we adding 2 to this? What, what does that mean? So basically, all this means, let's say um, this is like our new function g of x or something like that, okay? Whereas before we had f of x. So g of x basically means we're taking this same graph, the same x squared, and whatever value we get for that, we're going to add 2 to it, to the function value, okay? So let's say we plug in 0. So g of 0 would give you 0 plus 2. So I mean 0, instead of having our, um, kind of like the vertex of our parabola being 0, 0, now it's going to be 0, comma, 2. So now it's up here. So basically, this plus 2 being uh, kind of added, like as an afterthought, sort of, to our x squared, that means we're going to shift our graph up by each, each of these points of our f of x graph, our x squared graph, up by 2. Okay, so for example, instead of the point one one, now we're gonna have the point one comma three. Okay, so that moves up there. This one moves here. Instead of negative two comma four, now we have negative two comma six, and two positive two comma six as well. Okay, so here's our new like our g of x graph, which just represents x squared plus two, x squared plus two. So it's up there. Okay, so just in general to talk about vertical shifting. Uh, when we have like an f of x plus k, so some function, one of our parent functions or our toolkit functions, when we have one of those guys plus another number, or plus a number, or, or minus a number, that is, this basically just means that that's how much you shift your graph up and down. This is how much, um, so shift up um, or down. Okay, so if you get negative 2, for example, like a negative k, if we had x squared minus 2, then our graph would be sitting down here somewhere like that. Okay, it would just be shifted down 2. Okay? Alright, so now let's go over the second type of shifting, and uh, 
as you might have guessed, that will be horizontal shifting. Okay, this is a little bit trickier. Okay, anything horizontal, when you hear of something um, horizontally, then it, it's going to be a little bit opposite and a little bit backwards. So horizontal shifting is actually when we have something like this. So the general format would be like x, f of x minus h. So in this case, it's a little bit different. So if we saw the general format of vertical shifting, that means you have your normal function, f of x, and then you just kind of tack on a number to the end. Okay, that would be like x x squared plus 2. We just kind of added on the 2 as an afterthought, right? But this horizontal shifting, this means that we're affecting the input. We're kind of moving the input, okay? So what, what something like that would look like, um, let's say, how about like an x minus 2 squared, okay? So see how this is different from the other one that we had, this x squared plus 2? See how the minus 2 is kind of attached to the x, okay, before you even do the parent function and square it. All right, so let's say this is our new one. What are we going to do with this? So in this case, our h is equal to 2, okay? And horizontal shifting just means you shift left or right by h, okay? So we shift left or right by h. So once you figure out what your h is, and you take into account that h is being subtracted, okay, that's the tricky part because we have that minus sign in front. Um, so anyway, so our h is positive 2. So that means we're going 2 to the right. Okay, so let's look at what our graph would look like here. So we have normally 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so here's our y and here's our x. Our normal parabola looks something like this. Let me go ahead and graph it real quick. Okay, so this is our x squared. And now if we shift all of these points to the right by 2, our, our vertex is going to be 2, 0. And then the next point is going to be one, one, or 3, 1. Uh, and then we have 1, 1, 0, 4 and 4, 4, okay? So this is different, right? Because we, we shifted it to the right by two units, each of those points, okay? So we shifted that guy to the right, okay? So if we had something like x plus 2, x plus 2 squared, then our h would actually be the opposite, which is negative 2, and that means it would shift to the left. So instead of this, we would get something that looks like the following. So this would be our x plus 2 quantity squared graph, okay? Alrighty, so that was it for shifting, and now we'll go over stretching and compressing, okay? So stretching, stretching, and compressing. Okay, so this is kind of like, like I mentioned before um, in the intro, this is like making your graph wider or narrower, kind of like squeezing it or like pulling it apart, okay? So first of all, we're going to start off with vertical stretching and compressing, okay? So vertical would look something like this. So let's say we have um, the general format would be if you have some constant, some number basically, in front of your function. Okay, so this, uh, an example of this would be like 2x squared. Okay, so our, our a in this case would be 2. Okay, so that just means, uh, let's look at our graph, what, what it would look like here. So we have, here's our x and here's our y. And I'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3. One, two, three. Okay, so our normal graph, our normal parabola, right, looks something like this. I'll just graph that. I'm going to get really good at drawing u's at this point. Okay, so this is our original x squared graph. But now, when we have this 2 in front, that means that whatever you get by plugging it into your f of x, you just multiply everything, all of your output values, by 2. Okay? So 0, 0 is still just going to be 0, 0, because 0 times 2 is still 0. Okay, but for example, when you plug in a 1, let's say, then if you plug in a 1, you get actually get an output of 2 from our new function. So now it'll be here, and as will negative 1. How about when you plug in a 2 into here, now we have 2 times 2 squared, which is 2 times 4, which equals 8. So plugging in a 2 or a negative 2 is going to give us a value of 8 all the way up there, okay? So now if we connect these points, we see how uh, our graph is being stretched. Okay, and this is being stretched vertically, okay, because um, we're saying, well, for the same like input values that we had, that was kind of short, but now we stretch our graph uh, kind of like times two in the vertical direction, okay? So let me label that here. Uh, so something funny happens. So if a is greater than uh, one, then that means we have stretching in the y direction. So vertical, or we could say y, um, actually right vertical, that, I think that's better. So vertical vertical stretch, okay? 
That's what happens to our graph. And when a is less than 1, which means it's like a fraction or, um, or something like that, then, well, in between 0 and 1, because we don't want it to be negative yet. Okay, we're, we're going to consider that later. So anyways, if a is a fraction, basically, so let's look at an example of that. Okay, so let's say we have 1 over 2 x squared. So here our a is equal to 1 over 2. And now let's see what our graph does. Okay, so now we have 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so x and y. So our original graph looks something like this. And it went all the way up, came down, went up like that. That was a pretty bad u, actually. <laughs> anyway, so this is our original x squared graph. But now... All of our output values are being divided by 2, so we have 0, 0 still stays there. And instead of 1, 1, now we have 1, 1 half. So that's there, and um, negative 1, 1 half. And when you plug in a 2, now we just get a half of 4, which is a 2. Okay, so a 2 would be here. So now we see that it's actually, and it's kind of due to my poor graph drawing in the beginning, but anyways, this is going to be wider um, than it was before. It's going to be kind of shorter shorter in the vertical direction, okay? Let me actually sketch it on this top graph so it looks better. So for this 1 half x squared, I'm going to draw it up here now. So that would be 0, 0 is still the point. 1, 1 half is a point, and 2, 2 is a point, okay? And then it's symmetrical across the y-axis, so it's going to be something like this. So it's going to go out wider. So you can tell better on this graph here how it'll go out wider. It'll open out. And um, the values are shorter. So that means this is compressed in the vertical direction. Okay, so when a is a fraction, then we have vertical compression. Vertical compression. Okay. Alrighty, so now let's work on the other half, or the other, uh, yeah, the other half, basically, which would be horizontal. Horizontal stretching and compressing. So what does this one look like? So again, horizontal means you're affecting your input uh, as opposed to your output, okay? So if we're affecting our input directly, then that means we have something of the sort of f of, uh, and I'll use a different letter, b of x, or sorry, f of b times x, okay? So again, like I said, horizontal things kind of work differently because you're affecting your input directly, and that um, has a different effect on your output. So in this case, uh, what we're going to have is something like, let's say an example would be, I don't know, 2x being squared. Okay, so see how here, now our constant, our new like random number, falls on the inside along with the x. It's kind of like right there with the x. Um, it's its neighbor, and then the, the squaring happens after. Okay, so in this case, our b would be uh, 2. Okay, so b is equal to 2, and let's see what happens here. Okay, so uh, let's graph it out. So we have something like this. So here's our x and there's our y. And then we have um, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, I'm just making enough room here. 3, 4. Okay, I think that's good. So what's going to happen is that 0 is still going to be 0. So 0, 0. And then if you plug in a 1, um, we actually get, well, if you plug in a 1 here, then we have 2 squared. So 1 already goes up to 4, right? And so does negative 1. It already goes all the way up there. So if we were to draw our u, then it would look really narrow, right? So something like that, pointing upward, okay? So here we see how horizontally this has been compressed, right? So that, that's what I mean by it's kind of opposite. So when our b, in this case, whatever factor we're multiplying our input by, um, when b is greater than 1, then we have horizontal compression. Compression, okay? Whereas in the other case, let's say um, b is in between 0 and 1, so it's a fraction. Let's say we have 1 half x quantity squared. So let's look at this graph. Now we have x and y, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so in this case, if we plug in 0, we still get 0, 0, so the origin doesn't really change in this one. And then... Um, Let's say we plug in a 2 in this case, okay? So if we plug in x equals 2, we would just get a 1 out. So 2, 1 is a point, okay, as is negative 2, 1. How about if we plug in a 4, then we'll get a 2 inside the parentheses, which is squared would give us um, a 4, okay? So it goes up there, but finally, right? So now we have something that looks like this. So it looks a lot wider, right? So something like that. And so that leads us to believe that, well, when b is a fraction, 
then that means that we have horizontal stretching, okay? Because normally what our graph would look like is this. Let me just draw it out for you guys. So normally our, our x squared graph looks like this, but now we want to stretch it horizontally. So we multiply by this factor, which is, uh, we multiply our input by a factor which is less than one, okay? Or is a fraction, a positive fraction, okay? So this gives us horizontal stretching.